Hi guys, it's Xenia. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am recreating a video that I did last year. This is not just any typical video. This video just so happens to be my most viewed video to date on my YouTube channel. I'll pop it up over here. I don't even know where it's at right now, but I feel like it still gets traction to this day. And I figured I would recreate it since clearly many people enjoyed that. I asked you over on my Instagram page in a poll, which fragrances were your most complimented of the year? And I got hundreds of entries. And then I did something that I didn't do last year, which was to also ask you on my YouTube for anyone that didn't participate over on Instagram. And that is how I gathered up this list. And ever since that video, not only have there been so many new releases and amazing new releases too, but also my audience has grown a lot. So I wanted to give a chance to some of my newer audience to let me know which fragrances they get complimented on. And I'm going to kind of walk you through how I'm going to organize this video because this video this year is going to be a little bit more overwhelming than last year's video. Because in that one, I think I did a top 20 whereas in this one i'm literally going to be listing off like 40 perfumes like no exaggeration and that's just because like i said my audience has grown so i had a lot more entries i wrote every single one of these perfumes and then i marked off little marks next to each specific fragrance that multiple people would say that was their most complimented and i'm gonna do the same thing as i did last year where i'm gonna start with the fragrances that i got the least entries to then the number one most 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 complimented perfume according to you and i think you guys are gonna be shocked when you go to the end of this video and don't just skip and rush to the end just to see what it is watch through the whole video but when you do see the end though comment down below your thoughts just let me know your thoughts i hope i don't explain this in a really confusing way but i'm going to do this video in sort of a top 10 manner but each spot will have multiple perfumes in it because i got the same amount of people that said that those specific perfumes were their most complimented so starting off from 10th place the perfumes i'm going to list off got about two people that said that same specific fragrance then in ninth place there was like two to three people in eighth place is like three to four in seventh place it's like four to five and so on and so forth and it's going to be like that where i'm going to list off multiple perfumes that just tied for that specific place until we get to the fourth through the first place. I only have one fragrance for those spots. If you said a certain perfume was your most complimented and it happens to not be on this list, it's just that way because nobody else said that perfume. I made sure to focus on fragrances that were kind of repeated by multiple people as being most complimented. Otherwise, this would be like a top 400 list. I hope I made sense on this explanation, but I think as I go through this video, it's going to make a little bit more sense. Before we get into it, please make sure that you're subscribe to my channel and turn your post notifications on and let's get started. I have like literally almost half of my collection over here because a lot of these perfumes that were mentioned by you I also have in my collection but then there's a lot that I don't have in my collection but that I'm honestly very curious about because they were repeated by so many people and I'm like okay I'm, I may have to look into that. I'm not gonna go into notes on every one of these perfumes. I'll just mention a little brief description about each one. If I don't have them and I've never smelled them, I obviously can't say, so I'll just list off the perfume. Let's start with the 10th place. There is 14 perfumes in 10th place that tied. There was like two, like very few people that mentioned those, but it was still more than one. Starting off in 10th place with Alien Goddess. This is a very crowd-pleasing scent. If you're going on vacations anytime soon, this is the scent to bring. It's like a very beachy, vanilla-y, coconut scent. Super crowd-pleasing. I've gotten complimented on this myself like no other. And something that I find really interesting about this is my little brother loves it. And every time he smells my perfume, he hates every single one. I don't know if it's just a little brother thing, but that's literally like the only perfume that he has ever smelled in my... 200 perfume collection that he's like that smells really good i thought this would be way higher up on this list but hey at least it's still on this list which is delina by perfumes and marley this was also mentioned last year i'm pretty sure and i think last year might have actually been a little bit higher up on the list this is a great fragrance it's very unique there is no other perfume that smells like delina it's kind of like this bitter rosy sort of scent with a bit of a sweetness to it it's super feminine but i will say you definitely have to be in a specific mood to wear this people say that this is crowd pleasing i mean hey this is very complimented specifically by men this is like a little man magnet but i personally don't think it's an easy blind buy because it's so specific and unique i urge you to get a tester or go in store and smell it before you decide what you're gonna do with it definitely don't blind buy it especially 
because of its price point. Next one on this list, I don't have currently in my collection, but I did have it. I gave it to my mom because she really enjoyed it. But Chloe Nomad, no surprise here. I love this scent. Another one that's really unique from the whole house, Chloe Nomad is probably the most crowd-pleasing of the line in my opinion. It's kind of like this woody floral kind of scent. It is in the Shepra family of fragrances because it's very like mossy and green and super woody, but it's so, so sexy. And if you're into more, I guess, clean fragrances that are still super unique, Chloe Nomad is definitely the one. Next up, Hypnotic Poison. Another no surprise. I've heard for years that this has been a really complimented scent. For me, this is a very specific scent. I actually recently decluttered it out of my collection because it was just a bit much for me. I live in a very hot climate and it's like this all year round. We don't really have winter. We don't really have fall. If it does get cold, it's like that for maybe a month tops and then it's back at like 100 degrees. Hypnotic Poison is definitely a cold weather scent. It's super thick, very gourmandy. It has super sweet notes and it smells like that. A lot of people also say it smells like Play-Doh. Kind of does to me also, but hey, I really love the smell of Play-Doh growing up, so it doesn't really bother me, but it's a really great one. It's just definitely fall and winter vibes. Next perfume I have, which is Sweet Tooth. When I filmed that video two years ago, uh, this scent was not even out, so I'm so happy that this is included on here. Doesn't surprise me. It's a really crowd-pleasing scent. This is a white chocolatey, creamy marshmallow scent. It is addicting. If you're into sweet, gourmand, girly, pink-like scents, you're gonna love Sweet Tooth. Next fragrance I also have, which is La Belle by Jean-Paul Gaultier. I'm pretty sure this also came up in my first video of this. This is like a warm pear pie, but make it sexy. It is like vanilla and pear coming together, and it is absolutely addicting. There's something that reminds me a little bit of Vanilla 28 in here, but just with a pear note, like more of a fruity kind of vibe to it. I love it. It's so intoxicating. Lantern D also got a couple people. Lantern D I recently just decluttered. It's a very tuberosey, white floral kind of a scent. For me, it just was one of those scents after a while it gave me a bit of a headache. So that's why I decluttered mine because I was wearing it very, very sparingly, if at all. I mean, it's nice if you're into florals and sweet florals because it is also very sweet and you'll probably love Lantra Deep. Next up is Dior Addict, which I've never tried, but I've always wanted to. I've just never actually bought it, but I have heard really great things. I think I've seen it at Sephora and maybe I have smelled it. I hear it's very, very sexy and seductive. It's it's a really dark scent and pretty woody and that's kind of all I know about it. You're gonna have to do your own research on it. Next up, Lanterdy Rouge. So it's kind of interesting, Lanterdy and Lanterdy Rouge is on this list. I actually really want to pick up Lanterdy Rouge. The first time I ever smelled Lanterdy Rouge, I hated it. And then I recently went to Ulta and I smelled it and I'm like, this is actually kind of nice. It smells a lot like the original Lanterdy but it's deeper, it's more sensual. It's got those red vibes in it. There's a lot of spice that gives the scent a lot more character. It is pretty thick though, and I still think it's kind of in the same realm as Hypnotic Poison, not scent-wise, but just thickness and depth and strength and like more of a fall and winter vibe, so. I don't know, we'll see on that one. Next up is Armani C. I am not shocked. This is super sexy. This quite literally smells like red wine, but in a sexy way, which automatically makes me think of like date night and all those sexy womanly vibes. It makes me think of like red lipstick. It's just a really powerful scent. Blanche Bet is on here. I actually did like a testing niche fragrance samples video and I had Blanche Bet. I liked it. It was like a creamy sweet scent. For me personally, it wasn't anything to write home about but I know people are crazy over the scent so I know it has a huge following and I've been hearing it more and more recently so I'm not shocked to see it on this list. Then we have Zara Violet Blossom which I did used to have. It's another really sensual deep sweet florally kind of a scent and it's super inexpensive so if you can get your hands on it definitely do so. And the last two scents that made it into the 10th spot is Lady Million by Paco Rabanne which I recently got rid of. It was honestly a really sexy scent, very floral, touch of sweetness, but it kind of just fell through my collection as just being a little generic because I have so many scents, so I felt like 
I was just using others above that, but it's still a really, really nice one. Definitely look into it. And then the last scent that was listed in 10th place is Oriana by Parfums de Marly. So we had two Parfums de Marly scents in the 10th spot. Oriana is kind of, in my opinion, the more wearable version of Love Don't Be Shy. If Love Don't Be Shy is a little too much, too out there for you, Oriana is still that level of sweetness, I would say, but it's way more creamy and, in my opinion, just a little bit more well put together than Love Don't Be Shy. I actually really love it. If you're into marshmallow notes, check it out. Let's get into the ninth spot. So this one had a little bit more, still not a lot of people, but a little bit more than 10th place. There was about two to three people that said each of these perfumes. First up is Fancy by Jessica Simpson. If you've been with me, you already know the roller coaster of emotions that I've gone through with this perfume. I went through absolutely despising, despising, despising this perfume to now actually really loving it. The reason why I didn't like this initially was because this has a lot of white florals and specifically gardenia, and that has never tickled my peach, let's just say that. I have never been a fan of gardenia, and I felt like I was smelling more of the gardenia than the caramelly sugary notes that everybody was raving about in this scent. And for a while, I just was not getting the sweetness. I was just getting the white florals, especially that gardenia, so it put me off. And then a few years later, I revisited it and I actually fell in love. And now I am at that place where I'm very much in love with this scent. Maybe my nose just like matured, I don't know. But now I think this is great. And for a celebrity scent and the price point that this has, you cannot beat it. You gotta be a sweet lover to enjoy this one for sure and like caramelly vanilla sweetness. But you also, I feel like, have to like a good amount of florals. But this is really good and honestly, when it dries down, especially on the skin, you can smell the caramel more than anything. And speaking of super inexpensive scents, this was like 10 bucks on Amazon and I'm so happy that it made this list even though it was a little bit lower. It's still on this list. Choco Musk by Al Rihab. This is an Arab fragrance. If you're in the market for just pure chocolate gourmand deliciousness, you just want to smell like a walking snack, Choco Musk is the one to go for. And you're not going to be much to get that scent. But wow. This is straight up milky, creamy chocolate. Delicious. <coughs> oh. This is what happens when you start spraying a trillion perfumes. <laughs> this one was so surprising because this perfume has been out for decades, at least a decade. And I used to use this back in the day, like middle school days, high school days, specifically middle school days. But Fancy by Britney Spears. I'm actually shocked at the amount of times I saw this perfume pop up. I'm like, what is happening? And if you go to that YouTube video where I told you guys to leave me the comments about which perfumes were your most complimented, Many people were shocked. They're like, so many people are saying Fancy by Britney Spears. Like Now I feel like I need to go get that perfume. And I'm just like, yeah, like how is this perfume coming up again? I don't know. But I honestly am not that shocked. This is just like a sweet girly scent. It's on the more juvenile side. I would say it is a celebrity fragrance. It's super inexpensive. It has like cupcakey notes and tons of sweet notes. But honestly, although yes, it is sweet, it also has this kiwi note in it that kind of gives it a little bit of like this tartness and yeah, it's just a lot of really nice fruits and honestly, it's a really unique scent. I mean, I know it's been overworn and I'm sure like 90% of people, 99% of people probably know what fantasy smells like, but I don't think we could deny for what it is, the price point that it has, the fact that it's a celebrity perfume, I think... It's unique. So there's actually a couple of body mists that popped up on this list. There's three body mists. The first one, Cherosa 62, not shocked at all. This scent is top tier. I'm honestly shocked that it's not higher up on this list because for me personally, this is one of my topped out top most complimented scents ever. And I have like everything in this scent. I love that Sol de Janeiro has put out a ton of different products within this scent, like a scrub, a body wash, body cream, the boom boom cream. They have an oil, they have deodorant. I have like half of those products and when they're all layered together, you're just smelling like the scent 24 seven and I absolutely love it. So I'm happy to see it on this list. Next is Pink Sugar. I'm pretty sure this came up in my other video as well. And I'm not shocked. This fragrance has been a most complimented scent for years and years. It's also been around for a long time. How I found out about this perfume was through Ariana Grande. A few OG YouTube watchers have seen this video right here. I don't even know when it was put out. It was like when she first kind of 
came into the spotlight maybe like 10 years ago 11 years ago i'm not sure but she did this what's in my bag video and she pulled out this perfume and i think the whole world went crazy after that and that's how i found out about this this literally smells like pure cotton candy but it's kind of in this burnt sugary kind of way it has this little burntness to it that i'm not always a hundred percent with i kind of have to have my moods to wear this because that burntness and almost the synthetic sort of vibe that this has kind of throws me off at times but when layered right you could do a whole lot with the scent like this. Another body mist, another one of my favorite body mists, Velvet Petals came up on this list. So happy to see this. I don't even know how to describe this scent and the notes in the back are super vague. All it says is Lush Blooms and Almond Glaze. All I can tell you is if you have a Victoria's Secret near you, I promise you, you're gonna like this scent. No matter what kind of scent category that you like, whether you're into fresh perfumes, whether you're into sweet perfumes, whether you're into, I don't even know, just go and pick it up. I can guarantee you at least 99% that you're gonna like it, okay? I'll, I'll leave out 1% just in case, but I'm pretty confident in saying that most, if not all people, would love this scent. It's just pretty, it's girly, it's feminine. It honestly kind of smells sexy to me. If you've ever smelled Scarlet Poppy by Jo Malone, it kind of reminds me of that. It's also pretty similar to Snowflakes and Cashmere by Bath & Body Works. And the last one for ninth place is Libre Intense. I would have loved to see this perfume listed a little bit higher up, but whatever. For me, this is my like top five most complimented perfume. Libre Intense smells just like the original, but with a heavy, deep vanilla. This is probably one of the most sexy perfumes you will ever come across. If you're in the market, you just want to smell sexy and nothing else. You want to be complimented. You're trying to get booed up check out Libra Intense, specifically the Intense version. And we have made it to eighth place. There was about four people that listed off these perfumes as being their most complimented. So first is Miami Glow. You already know. This is another one where for me personally, it's one of my... Honestly, take this perfume away from me. I gotta put that away because every time I smell it, I'm just, I'm lost. All I want to do is sit here and smell this. I can't even begin to describe you how much I love this scent. This is quite literally like catnip for me. I, I don't know how to explain it. Every time I smell it, I cannot get my nose away from this scent. It's like coconutty. It's beachy. It's definitely the scent of summer. It's super strong. It's super long lasting. Great price point. But honestly, I would pay hundreds for this scent. No joke. You guys know how much I rave about it. The majority of people that have bought this have said really great things. But there's like a couple people that are like, I bought this, but it smells like a grandma scent. And I'm just like, where are these people getting that? Because... I, I don't get that at all. I'm trying to get where people are coming from, like the people that don't like this, but I quite literally cannot because to me, this is just one of the best smells ever. If I could have this in a candle, a car freshener, everywhere I go, I just want to be smelling the scent. That's it. I'm going to be shocked to see the next perfume. I can't believe this did not rank higher. Baccarat Rouge was in eighth place. There was about four people that mentioned this. I thought it was going to be a lot more than that but that's all I got. I'm pretty sure it ranked higher in my first video that I did, but for me, Baccarat Rouge definitely ranks a lot higher. Personally, every time I wear this, I get compliments. I know the whole world has heard about Baccarat Rouge. This is just like a very sugary scent, but there's so much to this and it's so sexy and it's so unique. I know it's been overdone and there's like trillions of dupes out there for this scent, but honestly, this is just the OG. I feel like this just paved the way. I'm pretty sure this is one of the most bought fragrances like in the world. Mongrelan EDP was on this list. I have smelled this and while I didn't think it was horrible, I felt like the patchouli in it kind of um, annoyed me a little bit. And then you guys know I ended up discovering my guest seductive noir which I'm mentioning because to me, that is like the better dupe of Mongrelan. Or I wouldn't even say the better dupe, just the better version of Mongrelan. And it's also not even half the price point. It's like $16. And Mongrelan is obviously a designer, so it's like 100 at least. I would say definitely get Guest Seductive Noir. I believe it has like vetiver. I'm pretty sure it has lavender in it. Really unique notes. It's a very nice scent, but 
again, that patchouli just threw me off in Mongrelan and in Guest Seductive Noir, it's a lot more smooth and feels just creamier to me, so that's why I prefer it. Next is Mont Blanc Signature. This smells kind of what the bottle looks like. It's this like milky white bottle and it to me it smells very lactonic and it's very vanilla forward but it also has this spice in the background. It's honestly really unique. It kind of smells like licorice to me. A touch of licorice. I don't have the notes in front of me and I haven't seen them in a while so obviously I don't have them memorized for this one and I'm not sure but I feel like it does give me a little hint of licorice. But nonetheless, I really love this. My go-to layering combo that I get so many compliments with this scent is when I mix it with Bare Vanilla by Victoria's Secret. That combo gets me compliments like no other. It's at the point where I know if I'm gonna wear the combo, I'm gonna get complimented. Next is Angel Nova EDT. I reviewed Angel Nova. I think maybe it was the EDP that I reviewed. I think Angel Nova is just like this really uh, fruity scent for the most part. I think it has lychee in it. I honestly don't really remember what the EDP smells like and I'm not really sure about this one. So look into it if it's something that interests you. Next is Sol de Janeiro, Cherosa 71. I'm also not surprised to see this. I am surprised that it ranked higher though than the Cherosa 62. That's kind of surprising to me because this is not that it's polarizing, it's not, but it's definitely not for everybody. This quite literally smells like cake. It smells like vanilla frosting cakey. It's just like the most gourmand. It is so buttery. It's delicious. Like it's literally delicious. If you want to smell like food, but like in the best way, Rosa 71 is one to pull for. It has caramelized vanilla and macadamia. It even has white chocolate, tonka bean. It's really good and it's yummy above all else. Oh my God, when it hits your skin, I feel like I can smell like the butteriness. It makes me hungry. It's like walking into a bakery. Okay, we've made it to the fragrances that ranked for seventh place. The lists are gonna start getting shorter now, so it's gonna get a lot easier for me to get through these. In seventh place, I got about five people that mentioned these scents. So let's start with Mod Vanilla by Ariana Grande. I had this in my collection. I did declutter it because I feel like it was kind of a mashup of like Vanilla 28 and Black Opium Le Parfum, which was like that woody vanilla with the touch of fruitiness. It reminded me a lot, honestly, of Cherosa 40 also, which is one of my favorites. It's also plummy, so that plumminess mixed with the woody vanilla is so sexy and intoxicating. Next, Musk Noir Rose. I love this. This is one of the best scents ever created. I bought this in Greece a couple years back when I went and I'm so glad I got the big bottle because it's one of my all-time favorite scents now. I saw this TikTok shortly after I bought this of this girl. I'm pretty sure it was like a Parisian girl and she was just walking and this girl stopped her and she was like, what, what perfume do you have on? And she pulled this out of her bag. And I think after that video, this just blew up on TikTok because that's just how TikTok is. But this smells so good. I haven't really been the hugest fan of the Narcisa Rodriguez house there's a lot of misses in this house but then there's hits like this that just make up for it all this is in i would say my top five perfumes for life i have a huge collection i've smelled so many perfumes so for me to say that is a bold statement but it's true it's one of the sexiest plummy musky rose feminine deep dark mysterious sensual seductive scents. Next is a fragrance that has been recommended so so much on my channel for me to get. It's an air fragrance and that is Camera by Latafa. I need you guys to let me know about this one because I get it recommended to me a lot but I also know that this is a dupe for Angel Share by Killian and the reason why I've hesitated to buy Camera is because I don't like Angel Share. For me it's too much it's too i love spicy scents but it's too spicy it's too almost like patchouli-esque it's just too much all around for me so if camera is like maybe a better version or it's smoother and it's not as like screechy and loud as angel share then maybe i consider it so i need you guys to let me know if you have camera in your collection clearly a lot of you do because it was on this list so let me know in the comments if you think it's better 
But if it's just like an identical dupe to Angel Share, then I probably won't get it because I'm not a fan of Angel Share. Next is Prada Paradox. This perfume has come in and out of my collection so many times. To me, this is a mashup of a lot of scents I know and love. It kind of smells like Born in Roma by Valentino. It kind of smells like Why So Libre. It's pretty much a baby of Libre and Born in Roma, in my opinion. It just falls right in the middle. I know it's super, super complimented. Obviously, it's on this list, but I also hear so many people talk about this. But to me, it's a little bit generic at times, I will say, because I just feel like there's a lot of perfumes that have this scent profile. And for me, Born in Roma and Libre are so much better, and I'd rather have them than Prada Paradox. This scent kind of bores me every time I see it. I'm pretty sure it came up in this list last year as well. But Olivia Bell is here anyways i've never been a fan of love you bell in my opinion okay this entire well not this entire video this entire video is actually you guys' opinion because it's your picks for most complimented but in my personal opinion i have never liked love you bell i've always thought it's been just the most generic sweet scent ever and i feel like every other perfume that comes out smells like it it just doesn't do anything for me i know i don't think it's a bad scent it's just boring. It's just boring to me. I don't know. That's all I'll say about it. But I mean, hey, it's on this list and it's in seventh place. So there was at least five of you that said this. I'm not taking that away from you, okay? I'm sure there's a ton of scents that I love that you hate. So this is not meant to be like offensive. It's just for me personally, I don't like it. But hey, it's on this list. We have made it to the sixth place. In sixth place, there was about six people or so that said these perfumes, so it's a little bit more now. We have Glossier You. Totally not shocking, because it's another one of my most complimented. Glossier You will make you smell like the most enhanced, most amazing version of you. It's like your skin, but better in the best possible way. It has an iris note. It's musky. It's slightly powdery. It reminds me of makeup. It's like that makeup powdery kind of scent. I love this. Every time I wear this, I get compliments. Quite literally. It's such a simple scent. It has very minimal notes, but it honestly smells really complex and very, very unique. I need to get another bottle because I am halfway with this one and... I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Next is Gold Couture. I was so kind of honestly shocked to see this because I know this was huge about three years ago when there was that Jeremy Fragrance video that popped up that everybody went crazy because he was raving on this. He was saying how this is the most sensual and sexy perfume a woman can wear and he was just like, if you watch his videos where he was talking about this, you know how much he raved on and on about it. And then a lot of people bought this, I feel like. But then I feel like it kind of died down after that. And now I hear like hardly anybody talk about Gold Couture. But I've done many declutters and I've never gotten rid of Gold Couture because I honestly really love this. It smells like the OG Viva La Juicy to me, but with a much, much, much stronger caramel note. And it's honestly super sexy. I love anything Viva La Juicy. I've always been a fan. What is my hair doing? I've always been a huge fan of the OG Viva La Juicy. So this gives me that with just a lot more caramel and like sweetness and it just feels darker and more sensual to me. So I love it. Hey, I'm glad that it came up on this list because it makes me happy that, that people haven't forgotten about that. And that includes me because I honestly kind of forgot about it for a second there. So this kind of has made me want to pull it back out of my collection and start using it. Then we have Burberry Her. I declare this because to me it was way too similar to Baccarat Rouge, but it did have a strawberry note that did set it apart. So it was different at the same time, but I just had a lot of these scents in my collection. And then I also recently bought, after I declared it, I bought Fall in Bloom by Bath and Body Works. And that is the equivalent, quite literal dupe of Burberry Her. It smells just like it. But basically Burberry Her is as if you added the DNA of Cloud or Baccarat Rouge and you just added berry notes in it, like specifically strawberry, you get Burberry Her. It's super good. I love it. And I'm totally not shocked to see it on here. I'm pretty sure it came up in my other video as well. Next up is Good Girl. This is another one where I'm happy that people haven't forgot about this. This is probably one of the first perfumes that my husband really, really complimented on me. One of my first big girl perfumes, let me just say that, because when I first met him, my signature scents were Tees by Victoria's Secret, Vila Juicy, Ari by Ariana Grande, you know, not the most 
mature, not the most womanly fragrances. Still love them, nothing bad to say, but I started wearing Good Girl and I actually worked at Ulta at the time, so I was surrounded by all these fragrances. And in one of my shifts, when it was slow, we would just walk around the store and I go to the perfume section and I just sprayed this all over me. And I'm like, that smells really good. Then I forgot about it. I went home later that day when I got off and my husband was burying himself in my neck. Like, I don't think he had ever given me compliments like that. And very shortly after that, I went and bought it. It is such an intoxicating scent. I mean, what it looks like is what it smells like. It looks super sexy and feminine, femme fatale vibes. And that's totally what it gives off. This has like praline in it. I'm pretty sure it has tuberose, lots of florals, lots of a lot of things. If you look at the notes, it's a very lengthy list, but everything works. It's not all over the place. It's super honestly refined for how many notes that it has. Nothing really stands out or is too polarizing. I absolutely love this. All right, I had to take a little break there because my camera was overheating and it was about to die. The next one on this list for sixth place is YSL Libre Le Parfum. I was actually kind of shocked to see this perfume that so many people said this one and I was more shocked to see that this ranked higher than Libre Intense because I feel like that one is a little bit more talked about but I don't know maybe I'm just out of the loop because to be honest personally I don't think I've seen many people at all talk about why I sell Libre Le Parfum. Let me know if you guys have tried it. I have no idea what this perfume smells like, but I am a huge fan of the Libre line. And if it's anything like the Intense version with like a variation or something, I'm sure I'd like it. But at the same time, I'm like, would I pick it up though? Cause like I already have that scent and I love it so much. But let me know in the comments, maybe you guys can convince me. And then the last fragrance that was tied for sixth place is Bianco Latte. I thought this would be a little bit higher up. I know this perfume has just kind of emerged. So maybe it's not too high up because maybe not a lot of people own it, but at the same time, I feel like a lot of people do. But I mean, a good amount of people did mention Bianco Latte. I was expecting this perfume to pop up at some point because I get this perfume requested to me on literally a daily basis here on YouTube and over on Instagram. I see it always popping up on TikTok. Everybody's obsessed with Bianco Latte right now. People just say that it's like the best gourmand perfume ever. It is a niche fragrance, so it's just supposedly really good. It has really great gourmandy type notes. I believe it has honey in it and like vanilla. I think it has caramel. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure. But I mean, it's called Bianco Latte and it's it just sounds really gourmand and delicious. And this will be my next perfume purchase. I could already tell you that because... I'm just really curious about this one. Okay, guys, we have made it down to the top five. So the fifth place is the last category that has multiple perfumes that tied for it, but I only have three. And there was about seven to 10 people. So a good amount of people that said each and one of these, starting with Eilish by Billie Eilish. I am very, very happy to see this on this list because it's one of my personal favorites. As you've seen, we have a lot of vanillas, I feel like, all across the board here in this video. Vanilla is just a really loved note and it keeps popping up and Eilish is just one of the best vanillas. This scent is creamy, it's sweet, it's like authentic, pure vanilla bean. It's like literal vanilla extract. It's so creamy, but it also has some spices in it, which I feel like just make it just more sexy, and I love it. Out of the whole Eilish line, this is definitely my favorite, and a lot of people's favorites. I put a lot of people onto this perfume. People in my personal life, not just on YouTube, and they love it to this day, so highly recommend this if you're into vanilla. Then, I'm so, so happy to see this because this is another one of my favorites. Kayali Yum Pistachio Gelato. This has quickly made its way into like probably my top 10 perfumes for life. I have a backup of like a 100 ml bottle of this because I have made a nice little dent in it. For me, making dense sense of perfumes is huge because I have a very large fragrance collection, so it's really hard to make dents. So you know if you see a dent in any of the perfumes in my collection, you know I love those specific ones and I'm just using them constantly. I cannot seem to put this fragrance down. I've been so into pistachio lately, but the way that this one is just done is just so perfect because although I do love me a good gourmand fragrance, when it's a really hot climate, which is where I live, sometimes that doesn't always do the best. And this is the perfect level of gourmand where it's super sweet and it smells like pistachio gelato and it's so creamy and absolutely delicious, but it has this 
airy, musky, fluffy, I would say, kind of scent to it. It even has marshmallow in it. The notes in here are absolutely like intoxicating. We have pistachio gelato, hazelnut, sweet rum, whipped cream, marshmallow, cotton candy. If you're a sweet lover, I what more do you need? Clearly a lot of you actually also love this. And then the last one for fifth place is Kayali Vanilla 28. This one, just like that Fancy by Jessica Simpson where I went on a journey of where I started to hate that and then now I love it. This one is kind of the same, but I love this even more and I used to hate this so much. Like my hate for this was real. I thought this perfume smelled like the inside of a church. I thought it smelled too mature. And I'm sure you're asking like, how do you go from that to loving it? But I'm convinced that the bottle that I had when I first bought this perfume was, it just had an age. Something in it just didn't work for me. And I know that for a fact because that bottle that I had, the juice in it was like a really, really light, almost clear bottle. And then this one, I got it this dark. Like the juice of this is almost purpley burgundy and that's because this has vanilla and after a while when that vanilla has time to macerate it just turns into absolute perfection and it will turn in color does not mean the fragrance has gone bad it's quite the opposite it usually just means it's gotten better i am so in love this may be just one of the sexiest perfumes ever uh, like it's vanilla to absolute perfection there's woody nuances to it and this is literally an aphrodisiac in a perfume i'm telling you and clearly it's pretty high up on this list so a lot of you also love it. we finally made it to the top four fragrances of this video for the top four spots i only have one for each spot these are the perfumes that i saw most frequently pop up there was so many of you that said these same fragrances and let's just get started in the top fourth place this perfume had over 10 people and this is kind of a tie because i kind of saw these two equally so i'm not really sure which one to mention so i'm just going to talk about both of them to be honest there's not that big of a difference scent wise between these two just a slight depth difference. And that is Valentino Donna Born in Roma. I'm pretty sure this ranked in my last video pretty highly as well. Absolutely no shock with this one. This scent is just one of the best bourbon, vanilla, woody, just true, rich, pink kind of vanillas that I've ever smelled. It's got some feminine florals in it. It's sexy, it's feminine, it's pretty and it's flirty. It's just such an amazing sweet scent for the most part. It has so much depth in it and the OG Born in Roma is all those things that I just mentioned whereas the intense version is also all those things but it's just quite literally intensified. Like this just feels richer to me like just a step up stronger than the OG Born in Roma. They're really great long-lasting scents Honestly, you could go for either or. I I really don't see that much of a difference. I don't think you need to own both of these. Let's just say that. You can just pick one based off of whatever kind of intensity that you want. This is pretty strong to begin with. It's super long lasting, but if you want just even stronger of a scent, go for the intense version. Absolutely no surprise that this was in the fourth spot. Let's go to the third spot. This one had over 20 people say this perfume. And I'm actually really happy to see this because I thought people forgot about this one. Versace Crystal Noir was said so, so many times in my comments on YouTube on the poll that I put up on Instagram. I'm honestly really happy to see this because this was really popular a few years back when I first bought it at least, like three years ago at least. And now I very rarely hear people talk about it. Like I feel like it's almost become like this really underrated scent. And this scent I totally get because it's a super highly complimented scent for me. So when I see that it's also for you guys, I'm like, yeah, okay. There's just something about this perfume that people can't not compliment. One of my husband's favorites, I always say this when I mention this scent, but I used to work at Target years back and I would wear this and no joke, Every time I went in for a shift and I had this fragrance on, I would get compliments by my coworkers. I would get compliments by random customers that would walk by me. You guys know if you're OGs on my channel, the way that I always explain this is that it smells like when you have just taken a hot shower, when you've taken your everything shower and you just used all of those super fragrant products in the shower like your amazing shampoos conditioners body washes shaving creams i don't know lotions everything and all of the smells of all those products are just kind of intensified through the steam and the hot water 
and then you get out of the shower you get out of the bathroom but you know that bathroom after you get out of the shower it's still like hot and steamy and all those scents are still kind of in the air when you go back in that's what this smells like i know that's a really specific and weird maybe explanation but i feel like we all know what that smells like because you know we all take showers i would hope this is the edt version by the way and a lot of people did specify edt then there were some that didn't but I just assume it was the EDT because I hear a lot that the EDT is just the better version. The EDP has a coconut note. This does not, but I swear this also has coconut. I can clearly smell coconut. But it is the most dark, dark, dark coconut that you've ever smelled. There's no hint of beachiness in here at all, which is what coconut can most of the time do. It just smells beachy and vacation-like. That's not in here. It's the most unique, deep mysterious dark coconut there's an edge to this scent this mysteriousness this sexiness it's super unique now for second place there was over 30 people that mentioned this scent and i'm really happy to see it because it's another one of my most complimented and most favorite perfumes and that is burberry goddess i am happy to see this pop up and so many people have tried and loved this scent and are getting compliments because this is a pretty new one this has come out within the past year so the fact that so many people love it just tells you how good this scent is and i always say this because i always tell you guys how much i love this and i always rave on and on about this but then there's people that say they don't like this they say that it's a generic vanilla scent and i'm like where i own like 200 perfumes like more than half of those perfumes are vanillas and this is nothing like any vanilla that i've smelled it's just so good it's a sweet spicy oh my god it's so good i can't this is just one of the best smells ever you just have to go and smell it that's how i could tell you burberry goddess yeah you're gonna smell like a goddess okay guys you're gonna have to um buckle up for this first place it's gonna shock you it's really gonna shock you or maybe it's not it's, it's either gonna shock you or maybe it's not gonna shock you at all in first place this perfume got over 50 people i literally tallied it up next to where i wrote the name of this perfume there was so many people that mentioned it that at that point i was just done even tallying up i was just like okay <laughs> all right this is definitely gonna be first place there's was no perfume that came even close to how many times this was mentioned ariana grande cloud what makes this so shocking is if you saw my first video that i did this was also first place in that video as well so that just goes to show i mean two years in a row this fragrance is i wouldn't even say competing with all these other perfumes because this was a winner by far i i don't know what to tell you i mean i had perfumes in this video that were almost 400 dollars, and yet this 60 dollar it's even cheaper now i'm pretty sure you could get it at like discount stores for like 30 bucks this one all across the board i'm not shocked because I know people love this one. I love this one. I know this has been said to be a Baccarat Rouge dupe. And Baccarat Rouge, as I said in this video, it was mentioned, but it was a lot lower on this list. In my opinion, this is pretty different. This is like the gourmand version of Baccarat Rouge, if anything. It's creamier. I smell this everywhere I go, though. That's the only thing I don't like about Cloud. If I step out anywhere, all I can smell is Cloud. But all I have to say, I mean, first spot two times in a row that is it for this video this was a long one for sure it's not gonna be fun at all for me to edit this video but i hope you guys enjoyed it i did also make my own version of this video where i showed you my most complimented perfume so i'm gonna link that up here if you want to check that out that is it for me today i hope you guys enjoyed this one please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and turn post notifications on and i'll see you on my next video bye